welcome back for another full moon ritual guide. Today we are going to talk all about the upcoming full moon in the sign of Pisces. Before we get started, please like, subscribe. I post new and full moon ritual guides every single month. Let's dive right in. This full moon is going to be occurring on Saturday, September 10th at 5.59 or 58 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can do these practices within a few days on either side of the full moon and still get that lovely energetic benefit. This full moon is known as the harvest moon. The harvest moon is actually different from other moons because it's not necessarily in September or October. It's whichever full moon is closest to the autumn equinox, which is, I believe, September 22nd. Pisces is a water sign and its glyph is two fish swimming away from each other but connected by a band which represents how vast and connected everything is. Pisces is a mutable sign which means it is the last sign occurring in its season. Mutable signs tend to be more flexible and flowing and open, more transitory as opposed to the go-getting cardinal signs and the stubborn fixed signs. As mutable signs are the last sign in their season, it makes sense that they are that transition into the next. Pisces is a water sign and might be associated with a lot of emotions. Pisces invites us to feel and be comfortable with our emotions and our spirituality. Pisces is the last sign in the zodiac, the 12th sign, so as such it rules the 12th house of the unseen, death, spirituality, secrets, so this full moon, check to see what's in your 12th house and see if you're aligning with the higher or lower vibration of that sign. For example, if you have Sagittarius in your 12th house, you might have the tendency to be a little bit more logically minded when it comes to spirituality and dreams, and you might need to let loose a little bit. Pisces traditionally is ruled by Jupiter, but in modern astrology is ruled by Neptune, which is the planet of creativity, dreams, the imagination. Pisces is a very yin energy. This Pisces full moon is occurring in the sun season of Virgo as the two signs are in opposition. Every full moon occurs in the opposition sign to whatever that sun season is. They both have very yin, feminine, and healing energies. Virgo might have the shadow of, say, having too many boundaries. That's going to be one theme around this full moon, boundaries. Virgo might want to have everything in control and not really give a lot of space to freedom or flowing. Pisces, on the other hand, might have shadows regarding a lack of boundaries. They might have the tendency to take on emotions of people around them. Pisces can be a very indecisive sign. They will just go with the flow of whatever is going on with their life. Like if their parent really wants them to be a lawyer, they'll probably go to school to be a lawyer and then hate it because they're not really doing what they want to do. They're just soaking up things from the world around them. Another shadow of Pisces is they might have the tendency towards escapism, whether that be through drugs, Netflix, just scrolling. As Pisces does rule that 12th house of the unseen, Pisces might have the tendency to want to numb themselves, to not deal with their emotions. That's another predominant shadow in a lot of water signs, is the inability to regulate emotions in a proper way. So they might either go too far on the numbing side of the spectrum, or too far on the over emotional side of the spectrum. That's where Pisces kind of gets the stereotype a little bit for being, you know, a crybaby. It's that emotional regulation that water signs do tend to struggle with. So this month, see if you are aligning with the higher or lower signs of both Virgo and Pisces. Some colors you can incorporate into your glamour magic are silvers, lavenders, light blues, light feminine pastel, mermaidy colors. And for glamour magic this month, I recommend wearing something that is comfortable but makes you feel very feminine. So like a silk robe or a silky shirt if you're more masculine presenting, something soft, something comfortable, and something flowing. Some crystals you can incorporate are amethyst, angelite, labradorite, aquamarine, and appetite. And if you want to incorporate an herb into your ritual, you can use lavender for its healing and calming properties. It's a great one to burn if you're doing a smoke cleanse, which I recommend you do every full moon. And so that brings us to what specific rituals you can do this full moon to really harness and make the most of this Pisces energy. In general, full moons are going to be a peak of energy and then a release. 
Whereas the new moon is when you want to plant the seeds for whatever you're going to then show off two weeks during the full moon. The full moon is really a height of energy which helps us illuminate our shadows. That's why we do shadow work. I digress. Let's get into those rituals. The first ritual I recommend you do, and this goes along with the escapism point that I made earlier, is to replace one episode of television with music. Whatever media you consume, replace one hour of that with just vibing to music that you really enjoy. If you don't know, this channel started as a dance channel, and I will always, always, always say that the world would be a much better place if people listened and just grooved out to the music that they love. And this will really help you get more in touch with yourself, especially if you're using, you know, the same comfort Netflix shows to numb yourself and dull that creativity. You want to listen to music and give yourself time to express and nurture that creative side of yourself. Another ritual idea for this full moon is to start a dream journal. Pisces is ruled by Neptune and it's just overall a very dreamy sign. I recommend putting a notebook right next to your bed so you can jot down things as you wake up. Our dreams tend to be very fleeting unless we write them down right when we wake up. So this full moon, try writing your dreams down and seeing if they have any messages for you. You might be surprised what patterns you see and how the media and things you think about affect your dreams. You might find something about yourself that you didn't know. For water sign moons, I always recommend doing a ritual bath. For this full moon, I really recommend trying to get outside and actually under the full moon and in some sort of body of water with you can. If you aren't near a body of water, that's fine. I will literally bring like a Home Depot bucket of water and meditate with my feet in it. Like it does not have to be aesthetic. Get in tune with that watery side of you under that full moon. If you're in an apartment, just pull up a picture of a full moon on your laptop or something. Get some of your body in water and meditate and do the journaling prompts that I'm going to talk about in a second. And you will feel so in tune with yourself this full moon. It's also a great time to take a full on ritual bath, which I will have a full video on that I will link here. So definitely check that out. And my last ritual idea for you this Pisces full moon is to cry, especially if you're someone who doesn't have a lot of water placements or tends to think more with the brain instead of the heart. It's really important for us to release our emotions occasionally, although it might be difficult. Believe me, I know I have a Leo moon, so like vulnerability is not not it for me, but this full moon, challenge yourself to ugly cry. And I'll put in the description a crying meditation that you can use, or you can do something like watch a movie that makes you really sad. Which brings me to my movie recommendation this month, and that is the movie Big Fish, starring Ian McGregor, and it is about a son recounting the tall tales of his father. Maybe I'm being a tad literal with the fish and Pisces here. If this movie does not make you cry, then I don't know what to tell you. Some yoga you can incorporate for this full moon is a yin yoga practice. And yin yoga is a very supportive and restorative form of yoga where you hold poses for a long time. I will link a yin yoga sequence in the description. Try that out this full moon before the journaling prompts so that you can really get in tune with your body. Some journaling questions for this full moon are, how can you protect your energy? How can you allow yourself to hold space among external influences? What helps you take a step back from your triggers? How can you release reactions that no longer serve you? What does space feel like? What does a lack of space feel like? How can you practice witnessing instead of reacting? What reminds you of your highest self? And how do you respond to opportunity? And some tarot questions are, what do I need to release to allow flow in my life? How can I be more observant in the present? And what energy will help me align with my highest self? For those tarot questions, I recommend doing a three card spread because the questions are in the format of past, present, future, and the cards will tend to tell a story. I know I personally don't have a lot of time to do a whole Celtic cross situation, so I really love a three card pull to just keep things simple. I hope you enjoyed this full moon ritual guide for the watery sign of Pisces. To recap, some themes this month are going to be around boundaries as well as the proper expression of emotions. If you want even more information on Pisces, I will link my Pisces new moon ritual guide from earlier this year, and I will see you in my next video, which will be for the sun season of Libra. And as a Libra sun at midheaven, I am very excited for that. So if you are a fellow Libra gang, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.